Hi, I'm Michael Shabon from Berkeley, California, and I'm here to talk about my new novel, Moon Glow. I, I think it's very easy to see parallels between what seems to be happening, what may be happening in American political life uh, right now, um, and things that were happening in, say, Germany or even in the United States um, before and during the Second World War. Um, the specter of Japanese internment camps was recently uh, raised a as a kind of positive example of what ought to be done, um, which was pretty appalling. Um, certainly one of the most disgraceful, shameful moments in all of American history and their, you know, this competition for that title. Um, uh, Ronald Reagan apologized publicly for that. So, um, you know, that's good enough for me. Um, and at the same time, you have to be careful. Um, not just because there is this questionable tendency, I forget, it's like you know, Godwin's law or Gresham's law or whatever, something God, of, you know, uh, sooner or later all arguments will devolve into uh, someone comparing someone else to Hitler. So it's easy to do. Um, it might be useful if it raises the alarm about things that are genuinely alarming. Um, but this is also a unique and particular set of circumstances here in this country. I'm not saying that's it's going to be better uh, or worse, but it's, def it's different. And I think we need to um, try to be as clear-eyed as we can about what actually is happening, what people are doing um, more than what they're saying they're going to do. Um, and keep, we have to just keep a really sharp eye and be ready and be, pre be prepared. I mean, if there's one lesson um, we might draw right now from looking back at the pre-war Germany, let's say, um, it's just that um, things that seem ridiculous, things that seem like they might be a joke, um, uh, can often turn out to be quite deadly. And um, uh, the people who dismiss them as uh, ridiculous and jokes uh, were, were, we know, live to regret it. I think the reason World War II is so uh, predominant in a lot of my books um, is because it's been predominant in my life. It was the shaping narrative of the social environment that I grew up in, but also in terms of culture uh, and representations in movies, on television, um, you know, uh, from old World War II movies in constant rerun on television, um, John Wayne movies and, and Errol Flynn movies and so on, to um, television programs like Hogan's Heroes, The Rap Patrol, um, you know, McHale's Navy, whether it was dramas or comedies. It, uh, and then in um, comic books, um, you know, World War II Captain America was, I mean, he's like a perfect metaphor really in that he was frozen in a block of ice. In, at the end of World War II and then thawed out and um, you know, um, resumed fighting World War II in 1966 against um, sort of quasi-Nazi enemies like the Red Skull and so on. So um, it was just ubiquitous and it really, I mean, my friends and I, when we went outside to play, we played World War II. Um, it was the dominant narrative. It's just I can't really get away from it, and at the same time, I don't really want to because it's endlessly fascinating. And even today, I still regularly encounter weird little pockets of World War II history that I've never heard about before. That are just all you know. Each of them seems like it could be a novel unto itself. It was just a, a gigantic story made up of stories, made up of stories, and it's been you know I don't know if it's inexhaustible, but I, it has yet to be exhausted. I mostly turn to fiction to feel that I'm getting outside of the prison of my own skull, of my own consciousness, and um, I'm being given the opportunity, at least for the moment that I'm reading a novel, to live someone else's life, to know what it would be like to be somebody else. Um, and actually, to me, that exercise, the exercise of the imagination to put your put yourself in someone else's shoes to see the world through someone else's eyes. Someone potentially very different from you, from a very different background, um, with different values and different experience. Um, I mean, that's, to me, the fundamental thing that 
we ought to be trying to do in our political lives as well. Um, and I, I feel very much that the, um, to the degree that you are actually able to imagine being someone else, um, you will be that much less likely to, say, torture them or try to kill them um, or limit their freedoms or deport them or whatever it may be. I think it's a massive failure of imagination um, and of the, um, the faculty of empathy um, that leads to those kinds of um, behave, human behaviors. And I think those are, um, that, that's a faculty that literature is designed and best suited um, for developing in people. So, um, you know, that, that's the kind of, that's the politics of fiction to me most importantly, more than any kind of, I don't know, a, a novel addressing some particular aspect of policy or something like that. When it comes to politics, my wife and I have adopted more or less the same policy that we've adopted with any subject, um, difficult subjects and easy subjects alike, which is there's really nothing um, that can't be discussed in some way or another with the kids. Uh, in, the ca in the case of this most recent election, they were full um, participants in family discussions um, who are, are consumers of news and media and are often um, seeing things on outlets that my wife and I are not seeing things on so they could bring uh, outside perspectives. There's no real point in shielding them from things they're going to have to find out sooner or later and you, it's always best if you can be the one who frames it for them the first time and gives them the tools they need to think about it. Oh